Hello everyone. We will be starting with part 2 of matrix operations. The topics we will be covering today are We will first do a recap of linear transformation, matrix transformation and composition of functions and then see how multiplication of matrices and linear transformations are related then have a look at some of the properties of matrix multiplication, powers and transpose of a matrix, and then define two new matrices, um, which are the symmetric and skew symmetric matrices. So let's begin with linear transformations. Now remember, when we say word transformation, it's the same as saying a mapping or a function. Okay, so let's define. A transformation T is linear if T, when acts on the sum of two elements, U and V, in the domain of T, is the same as T when acts on the element U, and add it to t when acts on the element of v. So what this simply um, says us is that t or the linear uh, transformation, so this lt, the linear transformation preserves vector addition. You will be thinking, what is this, where is this vector coming from? This is nothing but a, another name for the elements of the domain of T. So when I say U and V, they are basically the vectors or they're called the elements of the domain or, or they are the vectors or elements in the domain of this transformation T. Okay, the second um, condition for a transformation to be linear is when t acts on a scalar multiple of a vector u in the domain of t, it is the same as t first acts on u and then the scalar is multiplied to t of u. So which basically says that the linear transformation preserves scalar multiplication. Okay, now let's talk about some observations uh, where we will see a matrix transformation. Um, we all know that every matrix transformation is a linear transformation. A quick recap of what a matrix transformation is. A matrix transformation is defined by T going from an n-dimensional sp space to m-dimensional space, that is Rn to Rm, defined by Tx equals Ax, where A is an m cross n matrix and x is a vector in Rn. If you remember from the previous um, you know, obsessions on linear transformations, that this A is called the standard matrix it's a standard matrix for the linear transformation given by T. Okay also every linear transformation T from Rn to Rm can be viewed as a matrix transformation. Okay, let's continue further. Let's talk about composition of functions, something we learned long time ago. Okay, so if uh, I have two functions f from a set c to d and a function g from a set d to e, then we would like to consider the composition of g with f, which is written as g composed with f of x. 
which is given as g of f of x. So I'm going to explain it with the help of a little graph over here. So let's say I have a function f which takes element from set c to an element to set d. Suppose x is an element of set c when f acts upon that element x it gives us an element f of x which is an, ele um, an element of d. Okay now g acts on all the elements of d because g is a function. Okay so when g acts on elements of the set d it takes us to a set e and so when g acts on an element of d, which is f of x, it takes, gives us a new element, g of f of x of the set e. So what you notice is that the output of f is becoming the input to the function g. And that's the most important part for a composition of functions, which is the output of one function. In simple words, that's what composition is. Output of one function is an input for another function. So, what we get here? We get a new function called G composed with F and that is basically uh, the output of one function is an input for another function and that's how we define it. G composed with F is nothing but G acts on F of X and that F of X is coming from here. Now let's see how linear transformation is also related. We know that linear transformation is also a function. So, we can apply the composition of functions to the composition of linear transformations. Okay, guys, now let's look at that. We're going to look at composition of linear transformations. So, let's T1 and T2 be two linear transformations, where T1 acts on elements of Rn and takes it an element of Rm. As this is an element from one dimensional space to another dimensional space, we will have a standard matrix corresponding to it and let that standard matrix be A. And this standard matrix A is of size M by N. Okay, so which is shown over here. So this is our T1. Okay, so T1 takes uh, is an element from Rn to Rm given by T1 of x is A of x. Okay, what's T2? T2 acts on elements of Rp and it gives us an element of Rn. And the standard matrix which corresponds to T2 is the matrix B. The size of matrix B is N by P. Okay, so T2 is here. So T2 goes from RP to RN. So T2 is a transformation from RP to RN and then A acts upon the elements of Rn and gives us an element of Rn. Okay, so what I've written down here is when a matrix B multiplies with the vector x, it transforms this vector x into another vector B of x, which is an element of Rn. And when matrix multiplication is done on vector of Rn, we get a new vector a of b of x. Okay. Now this one is going to give us a transformation, sorry a composition of functions. It's going to give us a transformation yes but when t1 
T2 and T1 are joined in this manner where the output of T2 becomes the input of T1. From a previous slide, we just know that we will get a composition of T1 with T2. And this one, using the idea from previous slide, is a new transformation which goes from Rp to Rm. Okay, now the work uh, for the work is shown on the next slide. So consider the composition of T1 with T2, which is T1 composed with T2, um, is the transformation which goes from P dimensional space to M dimensional space, and it is defined by T1 composed with T2 is basically T1 acts on the elements of T2, which is T2 of x, which is basically T2 of x, remember, um, is nothing um, going to have, uh, this T2 of x is defined by B of x, which is done via multiplication by B. So remember, this is T2 and this is T1. And then when T1 acts on T2, so T1 of x, remember, is multiplication by A, A of elements of this vector, um, which gives us um, A of B of x. So as we showed in the previous slide, we had T1 composed with T2. Remember, this is an element of Rp. This is an uh, M, uh, n dimensional space, and this is an m dimensional space. So it is Rp to Rm and T1 composed with T2 of X is nothing but the matrix A, B of X. Now remember by matrix multiplication, we can have A, B to other. These are the properties and that's right. Okay, so we can do that. We've done it by hand. So I'm just gonna put that all in one little slide. Yeah, and that is that this ABX, which is just shown earlier, is produced from X by a composition of the mappings of the linear transformations or compositions of the linear transformations. Now, note this composite mapping is the same as multiplication by a single matrix denoted by AB. So A, when acted upon the vector B of X, is nothing but the matrix product of AB with X. So now we're going to give a formal definition of matrix multiplication. So if A is an M by N matrix, and if B is an N by P matrix, with columns B1 to BP, then the product AB is an M by P matrix, whose columns are AB1, dot, 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 ABP. Now, which basically, if you go back here to, from this one, what are these observations here? That this equation one, guys, it shows that the composite mapping, which was, we did all the linear transformations in the above slide, is nothing but a linear transformation, and its standard matrix is AB. What is most important for us is that the multiplication of matrices is nothing but composition of linear transformations. So what we have done is that we have equated matrices and its special operation of multiplication with composition of linear transformations. So two different worlds, function and matrix world are now joined we have this little relationship. Now let's do some examples. You've done a quite a theory here. I would like to compute the matrix AB. Remember when we first started this course, we did matrices, we talked about uh, matrix multiplication, learned how the little computation was involved, and now with the addition of linear transformations, we will learn a lot of new ways of doing the same thing, but making life simpler. Okay, so according to the definition we just learned, if I want to find A matrix with B, 
we can assume that the second matrix as written as columns. We can, we're going to look in terms of columns. So B is written as uh, composed of uh, columns of vector B1, B2, B3. And if I want to find A times B, so that means A times B is that A is multiplied to the columns of matrix B and it is B1, B2, B3 to the same as AB1, AB2, and AB3. Now let's look at what basically AB1 is. And then we will look at AB2 and AB3 in a similar fashion. Now, AB1, so this is the matrix A and the vector B1. Now remember, this is a matrix equation and I'm going to write it as a vector equation. Remember this one? It's the vector equation. Okay, where the elements of the vector B1 becomes the weights to the columns of A. So it's 6 times 3 times 1 minus 5 times 2 minus 4 gives us 8 and 26. Similarly, we can find AB2, and I'd like you guys to practice that, which will give us 4 and minus 8, and AB3 will give us 17 and minus 27. Okay, so we now know by this new definition, we're not applying the uh, you know, matrix product we learned in a very computational manner. It's now applying using things we have learned here. So this is AB1 and AB2 and AB3. So we can basically plug in the values here, AB1, AB2, and AB3. Now, this is what we are, the matrix, proper matrix definition is of two matrices. Now let's go back to what we did earlier. Long time back, if you remember, we learned how to multiply two matrices. So the first thing is, for this to be holding, we know that this two matrix multiplication is only possible if the columns of the first matrix is exactly the same as the rows of the next matrix. And that is totally right. This two is the same as this two. And then we know how to do matrix multiplication to get the first element. Uh, and AB will give us a new uh, matrix. A, this is our AB here. This will be the first uh, row and the first column will be basically multiplying the first row of A with the first column of B gives us 8 and simultaneously we can, you know, similarly, sorry, we can figure out all the rest of the elements. And this is exactly the same as we just got earlier, applying the proper definition of matrix book. So whichever way, guys, you're more comfortable, you go ahead and do this matrix multiplication. Now let's look at some examples from the book. Now suppose the first two columns, B1 and B2, of any matrix are equal. What will, or what can we say about the columns of the new matrix AB? And we're assuming this matrix AB is defined. Let's look at the solution. Now, since B1 is equal to B2, so when I multi multiply A on both the sides of matrix, that means AB1 is the same as AB2. This is all using the matrix uh, multiplication definition. We know that AB is what? AB1, AB2, because AB1 is the same as AB2, that means the first two columns are the same. And that's what it means, is that if I know the two columns of uh, matrix B are the same, so the corresponding columns of AB, if they were first two, that means the first two columns of the new matrix AB will also be the same. They're also equal. Okay, let's look at another question. Suppose the second column of the matrix B is all zeros. What can we say about the column AB of the new matrix, which was formed by AB? And we're assuming AB is defined. So as AB, by the definition we just learned, is AB1, AB2, blah, blah, blah. And the second column of B is zero. So that means AB, and so any matrix A multiplied to a zero vector will totally be a zero vector. So the second column of AB is also zeros. Let's look at the properties of matrix multiplication.
If A is a M by N matrix and B and C have sizes so that these uh, indicated sums and products given below are defined. So let's look at these matrix properties. It says that when A multiplied with the product of BC is the same as you're multiplying AB first and then you multiply it to matrix C. This simply is called the associative law of multiplication. Now let's look at the distributive laws. Now if you multiply matrix A on the left hand side with the sum of two matrices B and C it's the same as you're multiplying on the left hand side uh, to B the matrix A and the left hand side to C the matrix A and then you add them. It's called the left distributive law. In a similar fashion if you add two columns B and C first and then multiply A another matrix on the right hand side it's the same as B times A plus C times A, which is called the right distributive law. Now we're going to look at a scalar multiple to a product of matrices. It is the same as if I'm multiplying the scalar with a matrix first, R times A, okay, this is removing, and then multiply B, or we can do this um, scalar R with B first and then multiply to A, the matrix. It will still be the same. Okay, I forgot to write I think A here so because it says I M times A is the same as the matrix A which is of size M by N is the same as A multiplying to I N on the right hand side. So this is the identity matrix. It depends upon what side are we putting the identity matrix. If the identity matrix over here is on the left hand side, then the size of the identity matrix would be on M. Whereas if our identity matrix is multiplied to the given matrix A on the right hand side, then the identity matrix should be N because remember that the, the um, main condition, that is the columns of the first matrix and the rows of the second matrix have to be the same. Okay, now let's look at some more uh, concepts, which is the powers of a matrix. If A is a M by N matrix and if K is a positive integer, then A to the power K is basically you're multiplying A with itself K times. Now, if A is non-zero and X is an element of Rn, then A to the power K, that is times X, is the result of left multiplying X by A repeatedly K times. So if suppose I want to say A3X. It simply means A times A times A times X. Now, if K is zero, that means A times zero X should be X itself. In other words, a to the power 0 is nothing but the identity matrix. Okay, let's look at another main concept called the transpose of a matrix. If we are given a matrix M by N A, the transpose is basically N by M and denoted by A, A T, that is A to the, not the, it's not A to the power, it's basically A with the superscript T, uh, which is formed by, you know, switching the rows to columns and columns to rows of the original matrix. Okay, let's look at an example. So let's look at this example A. This A is of size two by three. So the transpose, will be you're flipping the rows and the columns. So the A transpose will be now three by two. The size would be two. So in other words, the first column will become the first row and the second column of A will become the second, uh, sorry, yeah, so the first row, sorry, the first row of A becomes the first column of A transpose and the second row of A becomes the second column of A transpose. 
And also, if you notice very deeply that 4 is A11. If you remember, the, this is the position. I'm using the subscripts. 0 is A12. 5 is A13. That is the, I'm, I'm assuming that these are, um, this is the position, and this is by general, uh, you know, term, uh, the, uh, the element of the matrix A. So when you take the transpose, what's going to happen? Now the 5 is now in the position of A31. So notice not that when we become the rows becomes the columns and the columns becomes the rows, even the subscript of the original matrix, remember 1, 3, is now becoming, in the transpose of that matrix, becomes A31. So look at even the deeper part of it also becomes so they're so much interrelated okay now let's look at the matrix b now now matrix b is of size three by four so what would be the size of matrix b transpose would be four by three notice the first row of b will become the first column of b transpose the first sorry the second row of b becomes the second column of b transpose and the third row of B becomes the third column of B transpose. A very nice feature is that the diagonal elements, their position does not change. So notice the 1, the 5, and the 8, they are same. What is flipping? Let's look at this one. The 1 and the 3 flip in the B transpose. That's what's happening here. The 9 and the 1 are flipping. This 9 and this 1 are flipping. That's So 1 and 1 on the first row, third column is now becoming in B transpose. The Third row, first column. I'm talking of this one. And the 9, which was here in the third row, first column, in B transpose becomes the first row, third column. And that's how it is. You are basically flip-flopping uh, along the diagonal line. Okay, let's look at the matrix C. C is a 2 by 2 matrix. So the transpose will also be 2 by 2. Notice the diagonal elements. The diagonal elements are 5 and minus 6. Now, they are not going to change. It's the flipping of the elements along the diagonal. So 2 will go down in C transpose and 10 will go in place of 2 in the C transpose for that matrix C. Okay, the properties of transpose of matrix are very, very important. So let A and B denote matrices whose sizes are appropriate for the following sums and products. So a transpose of a transpose of the matrix is the original matrix A. For example, let's look at this one. So 5, 2, 10, and minus 6. So this was the matrix of C. So when I took C transpose, what did I get? 5, 10, 2, minus 6. Now I again take the transpose of this transpose. What am I going to get? I'm going to get the original matrix C, 5, 2, 10, minus 6. Similarly, if you're taking the sum of two matrices and then you take the transpose, it's basically like you're taking the individual transposes and adding it. If you are having any scalar multiplied to a matrix and you take the transpose, the scalar is not affected. The scalar remains the same. It is times the transpose of the original matrix. Now, this is a very important part. You're looking at the product of two matrices, you're taking its transpose. When you write down the answer, it is the same as you're taking the transposes individually, but the product is taken in the reverse order. So AB transpose is the same as B transpose A transpose, and you can apply to a finite number of elements. Say, suppose I have D, E, A, K transpose. So when I want to write down what would be the 
property with this means k transpose it will be taking all transposes but then you're going to multiply in the reverse order and then it will be a transpose e transpose d transpose okay now let's define two very important matrices for us a symmetric and a skew symmetric matrix a symmetric matrix is first of all it's a square matrix such that if you take the transpose, the, or the A transpose is the same as A. A very classic example is the identity matrix, say 1, 0, 0, 1. If this is the identity, identity transpose is the identity matrix. Now, a square matrix is skew symmetric if A transpose is minus A. Uh, there's a typo box. So A transpose equals minus of A is a skew symmetric matrix. Let me write it down. A transpose is negative of A. So let's look at an example of a skew symmetric matrix. Suppose A is 0, 3, minus 3, 0. And if I take the A transpose, which will be 0, minus 3, 3, 0, which is the same as if I take the minus outside, 0, 3, minus 3, 0, which is the same as minus A. Okay, let's look at an example. How do we apply it? If I have two symmetric matrices A and B of the same size, and I take a linear combination of this matrix C, uh, of A and B, and which we denote by C. So as I C is a linear combination of A and B, that is C is A times A plus B times, you know, small letter B times B. These little small A's and B's are scalars. Then we say C is also symmetric. Okay. So I have to prove C is symmetric. That means I have to prove C to uh, transpose of C is the same as C. So C transpose is nothing but A times A plus B to replace the C by the linear combination of A matrix A and matrix B, which is uh, the small letter A times the capital letter A plus small b times capital B to the transpose. And now we're going to apply the properties of transpose. Remember, A plus B transpose, you can basically take the transposes uh, individually of the matrices and you will get and then do the addition so uh, small a times capital a transpose plus small b times capital b together transpose and then we also learn the property that if you're having a scalar multiplied to a matrix transpose is the same as r times a transpose and that's what we apply over here that means we take the small a out and take the capital A transpose plus small b out, capital B transpose. Now remember, A and B are symmetric matrices. That means A transpose is the same as A and B transpose is the same as B. So that means now we will get small a times capital A plus small b times capital B, which is the matrix C itself. And hence, if two matrices are symmetric and we take a linear combination of that, that matrix will also be symmetric. So C is also symmetric. Okay, guys, I would like you guys to have a practice of these questions from the book in section 2-1. 15, 16, 17, 19, and 21. Thank you.